Why is the money required, Josh? In other words, these are employees, as you said, in your organization, you have some of the largest employers in the country. These will, are people that, these are uh, executives, leaders who have a voice. They will be heard because they're major employers, because they provide critical goods and services, because of, we'll talk a little bit about infrastructure, because they're part of building infrastructure as well as um, have critical needs that they speak to powerfully at any point in time. The money part. Um, it, it's a good question. Uh, and, and Judy, I take the question to be, why should corporations need to make political contributions anyway? Yeah. Or the employees of the corporation? It's a significant part today of political spending. Yeah, it's, it's less than most people think. I mean, it's, it's probably, I think it's less than a quarter of, uh, of political spending. You, You've given me the eyebrow, so maybe I'm not right. Um, but it, but it is less than people think, and it is it's a feature of our system that um, those who are contributors to our politicians uh, and supporters of our politicians, they their voices are heard more clearly than others, and that's uh, that's not a Republican thing. It's true on both sides of the aisle. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that, that's a feature of it, and, but, but let me tell you how it, how it came down quite directly for me in, in my role as, as head of the Business Roundtable, which is I had, I had, I can think of three CEOs who called me up in the aftermath of January 6th, who said, um, boy, this, this has just put me in a terrible spot. You know, if I, if I stop giving, uh, then the Republicans are going to be mad at me. Um, and if I continue giving, the Democrats are going to be mad at me. And, uh, you know, I just want to, I just want to do business. I, I don't want to be a Republican or a Democrat. I want to be, uh, I want to be somebody who's working in a country that has good public policy that will let my company flourish. And so, and, and they said, I, I'm seriously considering just eliminating our our corporate PAC because it doesn't make that much difference for all the reasons you said. We, you know, I can still get a meeting with the senator from my home state, and I've got twenty thousand employees in Connecticut, and I can uh, I I can get access there. And I and I found myself saying, please do not drop your PAC. Um, that's uh, that's basically succumbing to the terrorists on both sides of our political system. In today's politics, um, the most consistently centrist and sensible voice about policy is the business community. All of the other PACs that are, not all, most of the other PACs that are out there are, are fringe groups that, um, are, that, are, that are thriving on outrage on either the right or the left. And if you, if you don't want outrage to dominate our politics, stick with your pack and stick with uh, being committed as, as difficult as it is for the business community having a responsible voice in our politics.